Once the safety questionnaire has been completed and the patient is safe to have an MRI scan, ask them to lie supine on the bed and position the affected shoulder in the dedicated shoulder coil. Give the patient an emergency buzzer ensuring they understand when and how to use it. Provide ear protection in accordance with the manufacturer's guidelines. Slowly move the patient into the bore of the magnet and centre the laser beam localizer over the shoulder joint or the midline of the shoulder coil. Next, move the patient fully into the magnet. Ensure they're calm and comfortable before leaving the room. Find the patient in the browser or type in the details manually. The correct weight should be entered so that the specific absorption rate can be calculated accurately. Now select the correct protocol according to your hospital and radiologist guidelines. Register the patient as lying head first and supine. Begin with a three plane localizer. It's important to obtain good localizer images. If necessary, replan and repeat. In this protocol, the first sequence is a T2 star egg seal, or alternatively, you can use PD fat saturated egg seal. On the coronal localizer, the positioning block should be perpendicular to the glenoid fossa. Slices must be sufficient to cover the whole shoulder joint from a few slices above the acromioclavicular joint superiorly to the proximal humeral shaft inferiorly. Ensure the field of view is sufficient in the axial plane. Now angle the positioning block perpendicular to the humeral shaft in the sagittal plane. A saturation band placed over the chest will help reduce artefacts from breathing. Wait for the axial images to be acquired before planning the coronal sequences. On the axial image, find the supraspinatus muscle. Angle the positioning block parallel to its length. Scroll through and you'll see that this angle is also perpendicular to the glenoid fossa. Center to the glenohumeral joint, ensuring coverage of the coracoid process anteriorly and a few slices past the humeral head posteriorly. Now angle the positioning block parallel to the humeral shaft in the sagittal plane. Adjust the field of view in the coronal plane. Check that the coil is on and that the saturation band over the chest is not obscuring any anatomy within the shoulder joint. Then apply. For the subsequent coronal T2 star and stir or short tau inversion recovery coronal sequences, you can copy the planning above.
Now on the acquired axial and coronal planes, plan the final sagittal sequence. On the axial plane, the positioning block should be placed parallel to the glenoid fossa, which will be perpendicular to the supraspinatus muscle. Adjust the field of view in the sagittal plane and in the coronal plane, angle parallel to the glenoid fossa and along the shaft of the humerus. Slices should be enough to cover the deltoid muscle laterally with at least two slices beyond the glenoid fossa medially. Now let's review our images. Here's the T2 star axial sequence. In T2 star imaging, fluid is bright, as shown by the bright synovial fluid within the shoulder joint between the head of the humerus and the glenoid fossa of the scapula. This is the T1 coronal image. In T1 imaging, fluid appears dark and fat appears bright. We can tell that the coronal image has been correctly planned by observing a rounded humeral head within the glenoid cavity. This is the T2 star coronal. Like the axial sequence, fluid appears bright in this scan. This is the stir coronal sequence, where fluid appears bright and fat appears dark. Bone also appears dark in stir imaging due to the suppression of fatty bone marrow. It's useful for visualising cysts, necrosis, edema or infections. All coronal sequences should enable us to visualise the muscles and insertions of the tendons within the shoulder joint, namely the rotator cuff muscles, which are the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor and subscapularis muscles. This is a proton density, or PD, fat suppressed sagittal image. Here, image contrast is provided by the difference in the density of protons within the structures. The signal from fat has also been suppressed. You should be able to follow the sagittal image from the lateral soft tissue through to the Y shape of the scapula, formed by the coracoid, acromion and the lateral border of the scapula. Notice that the humeral head is round and equidistant on both sides, a correct sagittal image shows a nice longitudinal cross-section through the shaft and head of the humerus.